Hi, I'm Tim Tomlinson. Today we're going to review the cleaning validation process for assessing procedures for ISPs and manufacturers cleaning processes on firefighter protective clothing. In an effort to apply scientific principles to determine how well we're cleaning structural firefighting PPE, the NFPA 1851 Technical Committee has implemented a requirement for cleaning verification. Cleaning verification is achieved through the use of a cleaning validation kit that can be used by any organization that wants to evaluate the effectiveness of their cleaning process in removing a standard set of chemical and biological contaminants. The 2019 edition of NFPA 1851 requires that independent service providers or ISPs and manufacturers verify their advanced cleaning and sanitation procedures for effectiveness in the removal of contaminants. ISPs and manufacturers will use the kit in order to become verified. Fire departments and other organizations cleaning their own gear are not required to have their procedures verified, but can use the kit and go through the testing process as a way to better understand the effectiveness of their cleaning procedures. The bulk of this video is devoted to illustrating one way an ISP or manufacturer could use this kit. Specific details for all materials and steps that are standardized are included in the NFPA 1851 standard. The rest of the procedures will be implemented based on your facilities or organization's procedures. This video is intended to complement the standard and provide a general overview of the cleaning verification process. As you view this video, please remember that the key things that are standardized include the contaminated samples or what was being used in the test to evaluate the effectiveness of the cleaning process, the features of the ballast and surrogate materials, including size, cut, material, and preconditioning procedures, and the procedures for handling and returning the samples that have gone through the cleaning process. The procedures related to your facility's advanced cleaning process are not standardized. It is your advanced cleaning procedure that is being validated, so everything you do between loading the extractor and removing the load from the extractor is based on your facility's procedures. A critical thing to remember about using the kit is that documentation is key. Accounting for which samples are placed in which pockets in which set of panels is the most important factor in the process. We are going to show you one form that can be used to account for the samples. The lab you work with may use a different form. What is critical is using the form and accounting for the samples. Where verification is pursued, a certification organization will supervise the process and will most likely provide the kit to the ISP or manufacturer. For more information on the background of the project, please go to our How Clean is Clean video posted on YouTube. This video is marked by section, and the start time for each section is included in the information portion of this post below. During this video, we are going to review the cleaning validation kit components, preparing to use the kit, inserting samples into the surrogate garments, setting up your laundry load, removing samples from laundered or sanitized surrogate garments, and finally, returning those samples to the lab for testing. There are two assessment or verification processes or kits. One to assess the effectiveness of advanced cleaning and a slightly different one to assess the effectiveness of sanitization. The advanced cleaning assessment is used to demonstrate the removal of fireground chemical contaminants. The sanitization assessment is used to assess the effectiveness of a process meant to kill biological contamination, such as bacteria associated with blood or body fluids. There are four main elements to the verification kits. One, contaminated and non-contaminated samples or fabric swatches. Two, surrogate garment panels. Three, ballast material, so that each cleaning procedure is evaluated using a load that is filled with similar clean material. And four, a tracking form for the samples that you will complete as you work through the kit. All or most of these items will be provided in the kit or box from the certification organization. Ballast material is an exception. It is more likely that ballast material will not be provided in the kit or box from the certification organization. Let's get into a little more detail on each of those elements. First, contaminated and non-contaminated samples or fabric swatches. The kit will contain fabric swatches that are specifically sized and are made of a particular garment outer shell material. 
the contaminated swatches in each kit have been contaminated uniformly with the same contaminants to ensure that each cleaning procedure is evaluated from the same starting point. The certification organization knows the initial contamination levels and can assess how much of the contamination was removed during the advanced cleaning or sanitization processes. The non-contaminated swatches are the same outer shell material as the contaminated swatches, but are not contaminated and serve as controls in the verification process for either advanced cleaning or sanitization. Since the contaminated and non-contaminated swatches look the same, it is important to keep them separate. Second, the surrogate garment panels have been standardized to mimic the outer shell portion of garments, but without normal pockets, hook and D's, other hardware, hook and loop, and other components to make for a more consistent wash load. The surrogate garment panels are made of a single layer of outer shell material fabricated in the form of a coat or pants and have mesh pockets placed in specific areas of the garment to standardize where contamination is located in each wash load. Bands of trim are also placed on the garments to represent another construction feature of garment outer shells. Specific details for the construction of the surrogate garments are provided in Chapter 12 of the 2019 edition for the NFPA 1851 standard. The surrogate garments have also been subjected to advanced cleaning prior to being packed and shipped to be more representative of used clothing. The same types of surrogate garments are used to assess your sanitization procedures and are sterilized by the certification organization before the verification process to assure that there are no foreign bacteria present before the sanitization process. Typically, the surrogate garments will be provided by the certification organization. For identification purposes, surrogate garments will also have a mark or identification, in this case, bar tack stitches, to keep track of each garment. You will need this information for the tracking form that we will talk about later. Third, an inexpensive nylon ballast material is part of the kit. Ballast material pieces are cut into various shapes or panels that are used to fill the washer extractor to its normal capacity as specified by the ISP or manufacturer for its procedures of advanced cleaning or sanitization. This approach allows for a more consistent way for controlling the wash load as compared to using regular clothing and at a substantially less cost. Like the surrogate garments, the ballast material can be reused multiple times. Specific instructions are provided in Chapter 12 of the 2019 edition of NFPA 1851, which describes how to size, cut, and fold the ballast material panels so that each organization pursuing verification can be assessed in the same way. The certification organization will either provide the ballast material panels or instruct the ISP or manufacturer to prepare them in advance of the verification process. Fourth, each kit should contain a tracking form showing the outline of a coat and pant and the mesh pockets on the surrogate material. It is very important that you fill this form in as you complete the verification so that you know which swatches you put in which pocket and on which panel. That is the only way to ensure the certification lab obtains accurate results related to the effectiveness of your advanced cleaning or sanitization processes. Now that you have some background information about the kit, we will go into more detail about the kit and how to use it. Each kit will include two packages. One package contains the organic and heavy metal contamination samples and control swatches. The second package contains the biological samples and control samples. The biological box will likely be in a cooler with dry ice or other material to keep the samples chilled. Therefore, it is important to be ready to complete the verification as quickly as you can after you receive the kit. The certification organization tests the cleaned and sanitized samples from these kits to assess the effectiveness of your advanced cleaning and sanitization procedures. You will apply your advanced cleaning and or sanitization procedures to standardized materials and contaminated and non-contaminated swatches and send those swatches back to the certification organization. The certification organization will test your samples and analyze the results compared to the requirements in the 2019 edition of NFPA 1851. As stated previously, you should have two boxes in front of you, one with the organic and heavy metal samples and one with the biological samples. Before opening either box and handling the contents, you must don proper safety protection. This includes gloves, safety glasses, and long-sleeved arm covers or a sleeved apron. These precautions are needed, one, to protect the handler or operator from being exposed to the contaminants, and two, to limit the potential for kit materials to be contaminated by environmental exposures. When handling the biological contaminants, extra precautions must be implemented. The handler must use an alcohol-based swab or wipe to wipe any work surfaces before and after touching a biological specimen. Prepackaged disposable alcohol wipes are best for this purpose. We're going to start with the organic and heavy metals box. 
Once proper safety protections are in place and you and the kit are at the workspace, open the box with the organic and heavy metals kit and remove all materials. As you remove the contents of the kit with the organic and heavy metal swatches, you will typically find material samples separated by Teflon sheets and contained within sealed Teflon packets or material samples placed in plastic vials that are also sealed in Teflon packets. The Teflon packets with Teflon sheets separating samples are the organic contaminated and uncontaminated or control samples that measure 3 inches by 6 inches. And the other Teflon packets holding the plastic vials contain the smaller heavy metal contaminated and uncontaminated samples. These measure 1 inch by 2 inches. In addition to the contaminated and control swatches, the kit contains three surrogate coat panels. We will refer to these as panel D later in the video. And three surrogate pant panels. We will refer to these as panel E later in the video. Each with pre-installed 6 inch by 6 inch mesh pockets. In this case, each panel is marked with one, two, or three bar tack stitches on the upper left area of the panel. The kit will also contain plastic tweezers. It is very important that non-metal tweezers are used when handling metal contaminated swatches so that trace metals from the tweezers do not contaminate your kit. The bar tack stitches are used to identify each coat and pant set and are important for accounting for which contaminated swatch was placed in which pocket on which panel. Set 1, one surrogate coat and one surrogate pants, has one bar tack stitch. Set 2 has two bar tack stitches and set 3 has three bar tack stitches. The certification organization you work with may use a different scheme for identifying the individual coat and pant sets. For the metal swatches, there should be two packets containing tubes, one marked contaminated and one marked laundered. The contaminated packet will contain six tubes, each with a contaminated sample and each with a code written on it. For example, M1P is for metals, pocket one, pant. So that sample will go in the pant panel, pocket one, and that code will be marked on the form, which we will cover in more detail later in the video. Non-contaminated control samples will also be provided. The packets labeled laundered will contain six tubes, each labeled with the same code as the contaminated tubes. You will place the laundered swatches in these tubes after you have completed your advanced cleaning procedures. It is very important that you place the laundered samples in the tubes that are in the laundered packet. Do not reuse the tubes that contained the contaminated samples, marked contaminated since this could result in the laundered samples picking up contamination from the tubes that held the contaminated swatches. For the organic swatches, you will have three packets, one marked contaminated, one marked laundered, and one marked blanks. The contaminated packet will contain six individual Teflon sheets, each separating a contaminated sample, and each with a tag saying coat or pant and a number. You will mark that coat on the form for tracking purposes. We will cover that in more detail later in the video. Not only are the organic and heavy metals materials in a box separate from the biological contaminants, but they will be laundered separately too. The organic and heavy metals kits will be processed using your advanced cleaning procedures. The biological kit will be processed using your sanitization procedures. Speaking of which, now we will look in the biological kit box. You should already be wearing protective equipment including safety glasses, exam gloves, and sleeve covers. If you are not wearing these already, put them on now. Before you open the box containing biological samples, wipe the work surface down with a disinfecting agent and clean cloth. Open the box, remove the styrofoam or cooler lid, and place the contents on the workspace. The box should contain petri dishes, contaminated samples, an instruction form packing list, protective gloves, labels, and two sets of non-metal tweezers. You will need alcohol swabs or wipes so that you can clean the tweezers between times you are handling biological swatches. When you are done, you will place the laundered biological samples in the petri dishes before you send them back to the certification organization. In addition to the packages already described, you should have your ballast material ready. The certification organization will provide the ballast material or will specify what material should be used how the ballast material should be prepared, and how much you need to use to complete your laundry load. Let's get started. You should have three copies of the form from this point forward so that you have one form for each coat and pant set. You will note on the form where the samples are placed, so it is critical that the number of bar tacks written on the form matches the number of bar tacks on that coat and pant set. You will fill in the date, 
number of bar tacks, cycle, temperature, and drying type information. For each set of coat and pants, you will use the copy of the form where the number of bar tacks matches what you've written on the form. The form should show that pocket 1 on the coat, or panel D, is on the arm, pocket 2 is on the upper chest, and pocket 3 is on the waist. The form should also show that pocket 1 on the pant, or panel E, is on the upper pelvis area, pocket 2 is on the knee, and pocket 3 is lower on the other leg. You will use one surrogate coat and surrogate pants set for metals, and one set for organics. The last set of a surrogate coat and surrogate pants will not have samples and is used only to optimize the balance of the load. It does not matter which set you use for which purpose. What matters is correctly marking the form so you know which samples are in which pocket for testing back at the lab. For each set of clothing where samples are inserted, two contaminated samples and one non-contaminated or control sample will be inserted into each surrogate garment. It bears repeating. You should still be wearing your protective clothing, including safety glasses, protective sleeves, and examination gloves. It is time to prepare your workspace. We are going to start with set one. Lay the coat and pants panel for set one on your workspace so that you can see the mesh pockets and grab the form you're going to use for set one. It is important to complete the form as you install the samples so that everything is recorded properly. For purposes of this video, we are using set one for the metals samples. For metals, Place the coat panel on the work surface and open the tube marked M1C. Using the plastic tweezers from the kit, remove the sample from the tube and place the sample in pocket 1 of the coat. Write the code from the tube on the form in the box for pocket 1 of the coat. Open the tube marked M2C and using the plastic tweezers from the kit, remove the sample from the tube and place the sample in pocket 2 of the coat. Write the code from the tube on the form showing the code in the box for pocket 2. Open the packet containing one of the control samples and using the tweezers from the kit, remove one sample from the packet and place the sample in pocket 3 of the coat. Write the code on the tube on the form in the box for pocket 3 of the coat. Repeat this procedure for the metal samples in the tubes marked M1P and M2P and a control sample using the pant panel. Set the panels to the side and move on to the next step. The process is similar for organics. For the organic samples, cut open the packet marked contaminated swatches that contains the loose fabric swatches which are separated by Teflon sheets. These are your swatches contaminated with organic material. Using the tweezers, grab only one contaminated sample at a time and place the contaminated sample in the appropriate pocket of the appropriate surrogate coat. Clean the tweezers. Grab the packet labeled blanks, cut the packet open, and using the tweezers, remove only one of the non-contaminated samples. Place the sample in the third pocket of the coat. You will notice there is a pocket under the mesh. Place the sample in that pocket. Set the surrogate coat with the inserted samples aside. Make sure that you have recorded the information showing which sample is in which pocket of the respective coat. Similarly, go through the sample placement process for the surrogate pants panel. Place the appropriate pant panel on the workspace. Using the tweezers, place the remaining two contaminated swatches in the appropriate pockets. Clean the tweezers. Place the remaining blank swatch in the remaining pocket. Mark the location of each sample on the corresponding form. For purposes of this video, you should set the panels you just prepared with organic and heavy metal swatches to the side. The next step for these panels is assembling the wash load according to your advanced cleaning procedures. The biological samples are dealt with separately since they are subjected to sanitization procedures. For the purposes of verifying sanitization at an ISP or manufacturer, two different types of bacterial contaminated specimens are used. However, for the purposes of this video, we will only be showing handling for one type of bacterial contaminated specimens since both types are handled identically. For handling the biological samples as part of the procedures for verifying sanitization, you must be wearing your safety glasses, sleeve covers, and exam gloves. You will also need alcohol swabs or wipes available to clean the tweezers after handling each swatch. It may be helpful to have someone outside of the immediate area, but close enough to hear you, complete the form as you place samples in pockets. This will reduce the risk of cross-contamination from the pen and the form, 
and will reduce the risk of error if you wait to record what went where after you have completed all swatch placements. Wipe the work surface down with alcohol wipes or use a disinfecting agent. Open the box, remove the styrofoam lid, and place the contents on the workspace. The box should contain either foil packets or petri dishes with one packet labeled contaminated swatches, one labeled laundered swatches, a third labeled blanks, and a fourth labeled laundered blanks. For purposes of this video, we are showing packets labeled contaminated swatches and blanks. Laundered swatches and blanks will be placed in the petri dishes after you have completed your sanitization procedures. Each pouch contains Teflon sheets or separators with a label for each sample, an instruction form and or packing list, protective gloves, and two sets of tweezers. One set of tweezers will be used for handling contaminated pieces, and one will be used for handling laundered pieces. It is very important that the tweezers be kept separate and that you use one set for handling contaminated swatches and the other for laundered swatches. You should also have alcohol wipes on hand to decontaminate the tips of the tweezers after handling each specimen to further avoid cross-contamination. When there is a mesh pocket underneath what resembles a pocket or a knee on normal PPE, place the swatch in the inside mesh pocket. Always make sure the mesh pocket opening is sealed so that the swatch does not fall out during cleaning. Place the coat panel on the work surface, then open the packet or petri dish containing the contaminated samples for the first type of bacteria. You should use a sterile utility knife to open the foil. Using the tweezers for handling contaminated samples, place one sample in the first pocket of the coat. Use an alcohol wipe to clean the tweezers. Using the tweezers, remove the second contaminated sample from the packet and place it in the second pocket of the coat. Use an alcohol wipe to clean the tweezers. Open the packet or petri dish labeled blanks and insert an uncontaminated sample in the third pocket of the surrogate coat panel. Repeat the process for the surrogate pant panel. Place the pant panel on the work surface and grab the packet or petri dish containing the contaminated samples for the first type of bacteria. Using the same tweezers you used for the previous contaminated samples, place one sample in the first pocket of the pant. Use an alcohol wipe to clean the tweezers. Using the tweezers, remove the second contaminated sample from the packet and place it in the second pocket of the pant. Use an alcohol wipe to clean the tweezers. Grab the packet or petri dish labeled blanks and insert an uncontaminated sample in the third pocket of the surrogate pant panel. Now you will do the same with the second type of bacteria contaminated samples and blank or control samples, starting with laying the coat panel with empty pockets on the work surface. If you were not able to have a colleague complete the form while you are filling the pockets, make sure you complete the tracking form immediately. It is critical that sample placement is noted on the form accurately. The risk of not doing so is a failed kit. The process for building the laundry load is the same for all contamination types. The difference in the cleaning process is that for the biological section, the cleaning process is a sanitization process that often may involve additional steps or additives as compared to advanced cleaning. Now we're ready to build our laundry load. For purposes of this video, we are using a 60-pound extractor and we are filling it to 80% capacity to get the ideal weight. Looking at the NFPA 1851 Annex, this means we have a total of 89 panels, 43 pieces of panel A, 12 pieces of panel B, 18 pieces of panel C, three pieces each of panel D and E, the panel shaped like a coat and a pant with the mesh pockets to hold the contaminated samples, and 10 pieces of panel F. You may make the ballast panels, or they may be provided by the certification organization, likely for an additional cost. You can also acquire them from another source, as long as they meet the specifications of NFPA 1851. As mentioned previously, you should have all ballast material on hand and ready to use before you place the swatches in the surrogate panels and pockets. Once you have loaded all of the contaminated samples and blanks from the organics and heavy metals kit into the mesh pockets of the surrogate coat and pant panels, you are ready to fold the panels and load the properly folded panels into the washer extractor. All panels used as ballast are shaped, sized, and cut in specific ways meant to mimic a normal laundry load composed of outer shells. 
Specifications are included in the standard, but here are some general descriptions of the panels. Panel A is a square cut with two slits on the same edge. The cut parts have right and left sections that are the same size and are smaller than the middle section. Panel B is a rectangle cut with two slits on opposite edges. The cut parts have two sections that are the same width on each end of the material. Panel C is a rectangle cut with two sets of two bisecting slits on opposite edges. Each end will have three sections that are the same width. Panel D is what you will be working with as the surrogate coat, and it is a single layer outer shell material shaped like a coat with a body and two arms. Panel E is what you will be working with as surrogate pants, and it is a single layer outer shell material shaped like pants with two legs. Panel F is a total of three separate rectangular panels. The three panels are all the same size. Next, each panel is folded in a specific way according to the instructions provided with the kit. Panel A is placed flat with the slit cut edge on the left, then folded in half from top to bottom so that the slit cut edge is on top of the edge that is not cut. Panel B is placed flat so that the slit cut edges are on the left and right. The panel is folded in thirds so that it is shaped like an S-curve with the middle and unslipped portion in the middle and the two split thirds placed on the top and the bottom with one edge on the left of the top third and one edge on the right of the bottom third. Panel C is placed flat so that the slit cut edges are on the left and right. The panel is folded in thirds so that it is shaped like an S-curve with the middle and unslipped portion in the middle and the two split thirds placed on the top and bottom with one edge on the right of the top third and one edge on the left of the bottom third. Panel D is laid flat so that the arms are out to the side. The arms are folded at the elbows so that they overlap the body. Then the panel is folded over itself at the armpit point so that what would be the neck opening is folded onto the body of the material. When folded, the mesh pockets on panel D, which is the surrogate coat with the contaminated samples, must be facing outward. Panel E is laid flat and folded in half so that the waist is on top of the ankle hem. When folded, the mesh pockets on panel E, which is the surrogate pants with the contaminated samples, must be facing outward. The three pieces of panel F are not folded, but will be laid flat side by side in the wash load. We will cover that process in the next section. After each of the panels are correctly folded, they are placed in a sequence specified by the certification organization and then put into the washer extractor. For ease of adding the panels to the washer extractor, they may be grouped so that several panels can be loaded at once, as shown here. The washer extractor is loaded with all of the number of ballast panels and coat pant panels containing contaminated and non-contaminated samples, according to the total number of panels specified by the certification organization based on the machine's overall capacity in ISP or manufacturer standardized load procedures. Additional instructions for attaining a load with the correct mass based on the capacity of the extractor are included in the corresponding annex information to Chapter 12 of the 2019 edition of NFPA 1851. As stated previously, for this video we are using 60-pound washer extractor filled to 80% capacity by weight, not volume, so we end up with three sets with a panel D, the surrogate coat, and three sets with a panel E, the surrogate pants. For this video, there are a total of 89 items that are placed in the washer extractor. You will be filling the machine to the capacity you use in your standard advanced cleaning procedures. Because a change in the size of the machine and capacity will affect the number and order the panels are installed, sequences for 40-pound, 60-pound, and 100-pound extractors are provided in the annex information of NFPA 1851. The key here is establishing the ideal load weight so that your procedure is being assessed accurately. Once the load capacity is reached, run the load using your advanced cleaning process. When the laundry load is complete, don safety gloves and remove the surrogate panels from the washer extractor and place them into a laundry cart or onto the work surface. Locate the panels with the mesh pockets and dry them as you normally would. Once the panels are dry, the sets are matched up using the bar tacks. So the coat with one bar tack and the pant with one bar tack are matched up. The coat with two bar tacks and the pant with two bar tacks are matched up. And the coat with three bar tacks and the pant with three bar tacks are matched up. Make sure you have your forms close by and match each form to the right pair of surrogate panels. 
This will help you put the swatches back in the right package for the certification lab. We are going to start with the surrogate coat and surrogate pants pair that has the metal samples. Cut the pouch marked laundered so that you can remove the tubes. Grab the tubes with the code that indicates they are for the coat. Place the coat panel on the work surface and match the number of bar tacks on the coat to the form with that number of bar tacks. For pocket 1 on the coat panel, grab the tube with the code for pocket 1 on the coat. Using plastic tweezers from the metals box, remove the sample from the pocket, push it into the test tube, close the test tube, and grab the empty test tube with the code related to pocket 2 on the coat panel. Using the same tweezers, remove the sample, place it in the test tube, seal the test tube, and set it aside. Repeat this activity for the third metal sample in the coat panel. Set the coat panel aside and do the same for the pant panel with the metal swatches. Place all of the tubes with washed samples into the pouch labeled laundered. For the organic swatches, make sure your tracking form is handy. Lay the coat panel on the work surface. Remove the Teflon sheets from the pouch labeled laundered swatches and grab your tweezers, but not the tweezers used for the biological swatches. Match the appropriate Teflon sheet with the pocket containing the swatch. Using the tweezers, remove the swatch from the pocket, lay the swatch on the work surface, and lay the appropriately labeled Teflon sheet on top of the laundered swatch. Repeat for the remaining two swatches for the coat, laying each swatch on top of the previously removed swatch. Remove the coat panel from the work surface. Do the same thing for the pant panel. Match the number of bar tacks on the pant panel to the correct form so that you know which swatches were placed in which pockets. Using the tweezers, remove the swatch from the pocket and layer it between the Teflon sheet with the same code you wrote on the tracking form. Repeat this for all other swatches in the pant panel. Place all laundered swatches in the laundered swatches pouch. The metals and organics packets are now ready to be sealed and sent back to the certification lab for testing. To seal the packets, you can fold the top and clip it closed, or if you have a Teflon sealer, you can use that to seal the packets. For purposes of this video, we are using a sealer. Place the laundered, sealed metals and organics laundered swatches, completed tracking forms, and the dirty tweezers from the metals and organics box back in the box you received the contaminated samples in. Seal the box and prepare it for shipping. The laundered biological swatches are handled differently than laundered organic and heavy metal swatches. For this process, lay the pant panel on the work surface. Open the package of petri dishes. Set your labels out and make sure your tracking forms are handy. Confirm you have the same number of bar tacks on the pant panel as you do on the form and using the second set of tweezers that came in the biologicals box, remove the swatch from the pocket and lay it in a petri dish. Put the cap on the Petri dish. Wrap the parafilm around the Petri dish to make sure there is an airtight seal. Using a Sharpie marker, write the code for the swatch from the tracking form on the lid of the Petri dish. Make sure the Petri dish is fully sealed. Repeat this process for the remaining samples. For the biological samples, you will put the laundered samples that are sealed and marked in the Petri dishes back in the styrofoam container in the box that the biological samples were sent to you in. Place the petri dishes and completed tracking forms in the box. Place the styrofoam lid on the box. Close and seal the outer box and prepare it for shipping. Once the certification organization has the kit, their laboratory will evaluate the samples to determine how much of the contamination was removed. And they will report those results to the ISP or manufacturer. The specific requirements for the contamination removal are provided in the verification section of the 2019 edition of NFPA 1851. For advanced cleaning procedures, the average cleaning efficiency or removal rate for semi-volatile organic compounds must be 50%. For heavy metal contaminants, the cleaning efficiency for each heavy metal must be at least 50%. In assessing sanitization, the log reduction must be at least three. This is the same as a removal rate of 99.9%. .9%. As you can see, the fire service is finally able to apply scientific methods to evaluate how effective our cleaning procedures are. We can never expect to remove 100% of every contaminant, but with the cleaning verification approach, we will now know how well we're doing without guessing. If you are interested in learning more, we will provide updates using our YouTube channel, associated websites, and all other accessible methods. 
Thank you for your interest. If you would like email updates on the project specifically, please visit www.nfpa.org forward slash PPE cleaning.